Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So in this one, I want to compare the 2020 13 inch MacBook Air, which I've got right here, versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro, maxed out MacBook Pro I've got right here. And I want to compare the performance difference in Final Cut Pro video editing. So the MacBook Air I've got right here, this is the very bare bone base MacBook Air that you can get for $1,000. This is the 256 gig with uh, the eight gig memory and it's got the seven core GPU. So bottom of the barrel, cheapest MacBook you can get. This on the other hand, this is a basically maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro with the upgraded uh, eight core CPU along with 32 gigs of memory, uh, the whole works. So, uh, I actually did two tests with Final Cut Pro and I wanted to see what kind of performance differences in exporting a 10 minute uh, video is like. So I shot, uh, or actually I used a project of my last video. It was like a 10 minute video with uh, some sped up footage and some some cutting, you know, it's, it wasn't really fancy or anything. It was just basically a you know, YouTube video that I make, right? And, uh, loaded it up on both systems and just let it export. And I made sure to delete all the generated files and disable pre-rendering. So the numbers that ended up with was, oh, okay, let me back up actually. The video was shot on 4K 30 um, and it was shot in H.264. First, I exported as H.264 as the final project and uh, the MacBook Pro 16 inch was able to do it in four minutes for 17 seconds. So four minutes, 17 seconds. The 2020 MacBook Air with the M1 processor here did it in um, 17 minutes, 30 seconds. So that's 13 minutes and 15 seconds additional time. So about 20% longer than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now mind you, this is running the Apple Silicon with the optimized Final Cut Pro for Apple Silicon, but Considering the price differences between the two, only a 20% performance hit, that's amazing. Um, and then I redid the whole project again, just to export it again as a Pro, uh, ProRes. So exporting 4K ProRes using the exact same source files. Uh, this computer was able to do it in five minutes, 40 seconds, while this computer took an, an additional 14 seconds. So. Virtually, these two computers finished it almost at basically at the exact same time, uh, give or take a few seconds. So if you're working at Final Cut Pro, I think the uh, conclusion is if you are working even up to 4K files that if the M1 processor is a very, very capable processor, even in the very cheapest entry level MacBook Pro, it's able to basically keep up with the top of the line MacBook Pro that you can, money can buy. So uh, now, you know, is what, what's going on here, right? And if you take a look at Geekbench, for example, Geekbench um, and the performance differences, if I recall correctly, I'm gonna throw up the numbers here, but I think the 2020 MacBook Air had like 1700 score of 17 something of single core with uh, like a 7200 or 7300 multi-core score while the macbook pro 16 inch had like 1100 or 1200 actually slower single core score but basically the same uh, multi-core score so cpu wise i would almost say that the macbook airs eight core cpu is more powerful than the intel's eight core cpu what the major difference is, my guess is, is the 16 inch MacBook Pro has the 5500, the Radeon 5500M GPU, dedicated GPU, which draws a lot more power and can do a lot more work. This, however, has the integrated M1 GPU. So uh, clearly it's gonna be less powerful because the power draw is less powerful, but it's so much more efficient that it almost keeps up with the encoding performance of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So that is very, very uh, amazing. One thing that I do wanna note that it blows my mind is the efficiency of the 13 inch MacBook Air. And what I mean by that is uh, I could hear the fans ramp up on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but the 13 inch MacBook Air with the M1 chips, 
com stayed completely cool to the touch. In fact, uh, after exporting the H.264 and then exporting the ProRes uh, file back to back, the chassis was cold to the touch, like metal, you know, as if it was just sitting there idle the entire time. And of course, being fanless, you know, the fans, there weren't any fans to ramp up and there was absolutely no hot spots on the system. It's, it stayed completely cold to the touch. So that's, it just blew my mind. If you're doing some light video editing work, I would say that the, the 13 inch MacBook Air or the 13 inch MacBook Pro, both with the M1 chips, are plenty capable of keeping up with the bigger boys. You know, uh, once, once eventually Apple comes out with a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro with the second gen M chips, uh, more powerful M chips with uh, bigger power draws and everything, that's gonna be out of this world con considering what they're able to do on 10 or 15 watts of power draw. You know, if you throw 40 or plus of power wattage at these chips and you know make them bigger and make them more capable, it's gonna be amazing. But uh, we're probably not gonna get see those 16 inch MacBook Pros with the Apple Silicon until 2021. So I am super, super, super hyped about seeing those and seeing what the next generation of M chips are able to do. Because from what I've seen right here, the entry level 13 inch MacBook Air is, is able to almost trade blows with the best of the best here. So it's, it's certainly an exciting time, especially if you are working in uh, Final Cut uh, on video editing, you know. If you're working in Adobe, um, Adobe I think currently is, it's in beta on the, uh, or the software, Photoshop and whatever, all that software is in beta for um, with the Apple Silicon. So probably it's not all that optimized at the moment, but once, you know, Adobe eventually optimizes and takes use of Apple Silicon, um, performance, would be pretty interesting to see what Adobe ends up with. But certainly, um, you know, performance is there for Final Cut. And I would hazard a guess, maybe DaVinci Resolve is probably right there with a Final Cut Pro because uh, DaVinci Resolve usually is pretty optimized for Apple systems. So in any case, this was just a very quick look at what the 13 inch MacBook Air with the M1 Silicon ch Apple Silicon chip can do. And certainly I'm very impressed. Anyway, my name is Stan. This was just a very quick video. I'll see you guys in the next one.